everybody, De really here. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Nor 9 Var Commons. We are on the second video here with Masamune. Well, anyway, there's not really that much to say about what happened in the beginning, so I'm just going to go ahead and start reading. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Days pass after our second handshake. Mr. Masamune was busy as always, so I ended up left on my own more often than not. One thing had changed, though. Mr. Masamune was giving me lessons on school subjects and common knowledge. I'd only ever learned things from books before, so even reviewing things felt fresh and new because I had a teacher present. Aw, he looks... I like him with glasses. He looks good that way. I was having fun learning all sorts of new things, of course. But I was also ecstatic that I got to spend lots more time with Mr. Masamune. For some reason, Mr. Masamune always puts on glasses when it's time for our study sessions. It makes him look like a different person. And then, Koharu, are you listening to me? Y yes sir I'm sorry. I think that's enough study for today. We'll pick back up here at a later time. Okay, thank you very much. No prob, you pick things up so quickly. It makes teaching you feel rewarding. However, now is when we get to the really important stuff. Next, I'm going to teach you things you want to watch out for in everyday life. Like Itsuki? <laughs> okay! I know I told you this before, but watch yourself around Itsuki. <laughs> what did I say? He's not a bad person, but he sometimes goes too far with his pranks. He will also try to tell you things that you're better off not knowing. Don't try to shut him up, just put your fingers in your ears. Put my fingers in my ears, right. Okay, I will. It's strange, you sound an awful lot like Mr. Sakuya sometimes, Mr. Masamune. Oh, I do. How? Mr. Sakuya often says to beware of Mr. Itsuki, too. Though I usually hear him saying it to Mikoto. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I guess he would, yeah. See, uh, in some ways Itsuki is dangerous for any women to be around. Oh, I see. It's not just Itsuki. Be careful of any man who says things that sound too good to be true. Keep your guard up and don't let him in too easily. Don't let him in? In other words... Huh... Wait a minute... What is it, Koharu? I just thought of something. If that's the case, then... How does the princess fall in love with the prince in fairy tales? The prince and princess? Yeah, in all the fairy tales, the prince and princess hardly ever speak to each other before they fall in love. Then the princess lets the prince take her away and get married to her. Doesn't that mean she listened when a man told her something too good to be true and let her guard down around him? Well, uh, fairy tales are different. They are? How do people fall in love with each other then? If I'm not supposed to let my guard down and trust a man, how... Boy, everyday common knowledge seems way harder to understand than regular school subjects. Er, uh, that's kind of hard to explain. Oh! What? If I'm supposed to keep my guard up around men, does that mean around you too? Oh dear, if that's the case then, I don't know who I can go ask to teach me all the things I need to know. You don't have to around me, I don't intend to do anything bad to you. That's true, it's you after all, Mr. Masamune. Kohoru, I promise you, I will never do anything to hurt you, ever. Okay! One more thing, it's wise not to talk about yourself too much. Well, what about myself? Like your powers and where you come from, keep things like that to yourself. Why would he tell me something like that? My powers were already a subject that I never wanted to discuss with anyone. I guess it must be because it's very important that I don't. Do you understand, Kaharu? Yep, I got it, Mr. Masamune. And that would be it for today's meeting. Do you have any questions? Nope, thank you very much. Today was so much fun. I learned all sorts of new things. Good to hear. You learn new things so fast, it's always a joy to teach you. You're a very good teacher, Mr. Masamune. <laughs> You're even getting the hang of flattery now, too. 
I expect you're starting to get really settled into life here on the ship. Yeah, that's all thanks to you too. No, I had nothing to do with it. You're fitting in because you're making an effort to. Oops, look at the time. Do you need to report to the world again? Yeah, sorry. I won't be gone long. Okay, see you later. Almost every day, Mr. Masamune took some time to teach me all sort of important things I need to know for everyday life. He taught me proper manners and customs that were considered to be common sense. None of these things were covered at all in my books, and some of them seemed very complicated. But every time I got confused, Mr. Masamune would slow down and explain to me, bit by bit, until I fully understood it. But Mr. Masamune was still very busy. Before and after teaching me, he was always coming from somewhere or rushing off somewhere else. Okay, let's get started for today. Okay! He told me not to worry about it, but I can't help myself. I'm really concerned for him. Mr. Masamune, are you sure you're getting enough rest? Huh? Oh, right. You're always asking me that. Do I look that worn out to you? No, but you're always so busy. I have to think that you must get really tired. Well, there's always something going on around here. Even Sorata's starting to cause problems. Suzuhara? Really? How is he doing anyway? Does it seem like he's acting differently to you lately? I'm not sure. I haven't seen him much lately. I guess I'm not good company to him anymore. He spends his time with the Hyoko that really likes machinery these days. Hyoko, eh? Well, I guess that makes sense. He is staying in their room after all. Oh, that's right. He did say that he found a new friend, too. A friend? Yeah, a girl. I haven't seen her at all, though, so I can't really describe her. So Ion's been speaking to Sorata this whole time he's been on the ship. We didn't know about it. A girl? Do you know who it might be, Mr. Masamune? Uh, nope. Not at all. I haven't the foggiest. I'm just glad that Suzuhara seems to be calming down and settling in. He's having fun, too. Really? That's good to hear. So please, try not to take on too much, okay? If there's anything I can help out with, I have the time, and I want to be able to help you out. Oops! Oh my gosh! I'm so sorry! I'm the one who should be getting the lecture and not giving one. That was very presumptuous of me. I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's okay. I, uh, I'm just not used to hearing that kind of thing, so I was at a loss for words for a second, that's all. What kind of thing? Well, you know how it is for me. I tend to get taken for granted. Oh, that's right. Mikoto said something like that about him, too. From my perspective, Mr. Masamune looked like he was always having a hard time. Something or other was always worrying him. The idiom guide we'd been studying caught my eye. By coincidence, the phrase... Take for granted was right there on the open page. To underestimate the value of, to grow accustomed or entitled to, to fail to appreciate. That's... My palms suddenly felt hot and sweaty. I balled them into fists. I won't ever take you for granted, Mr. Masamune. I promise. Kohoru. It isn't right to think someone is always going to be nice just because. Being nice to people is... is... Er, what I'm trying to say is, it's, um... Wait a minute. The words in my head got all jumbled and stuck. Of course, it wasn't as if I thought before I opened my mouth. I had no idea how to put my feelings in the words. I knew that I had something important to say, but I just couldn't find a way to say it. Despite my efforts, no words came to mind. I found myself wondering if I maybe should just forget about trying to say it. Sometimes I just blurt out what I'm thinking and I wasn't sure that whatever I ended up saying wouldn't unintentionally hurt him. I have to calm down and think this out. This is something I want to say the right way. The building anxiety I was feeling now subsided. I felt much better. Kohoru. Y yes Take your time. Take as much as you need. I'll wait. When you figure out what it is you want to say, then come to me and say it. Mr. Masamune was amazing. He was so good at saying what I wanted to hear. I wondered if he could read my mind. But that's Mr. Heishi's power. If it wasn't his power, then how did he do it? Maybe it was because he was older and wiser, or maybe it was just his personality. I took a few deep breaths to calm myself. 
I was the last one to come aboard the ship, so everyone obviously knows you much better than I do. But I don't think that you are someone who should be taken for granted just because of who you are. Even though I've only been with you for a few days, I can still tell how very busy you are. I know you try to hide it from me, but I'm sure there are times when you are very, very tired. Being nice to other people isn't an everyday thing, it's a special thing. I'm sorry, uh, I did it again, didn't I? I acted like I was the one lecturing. No, it's okay. Let me tell you one thing, just so we're clear, okay? The folks on this ship aren't bad people, they're just a handful. There are times when they're a help to me and I do enjoy hanging out with them. Uh, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to imply that they were bad people. No, sorry. That was my fault. I put it in such a way that it seemed like I was getting defensive. Thanks. You're a really good, nice girl. Being around you helps me feel better. Really? Yeah. I let out a little sigh of relief. It seems like what I wanted to say got through to Mr. Masamune, and he said it made him happy. Both of those things made me feel really happy too. The fact that I'm having such a nice and fun time on the ship is thanks to him. I want to do something to thank him. What is something that I can do that would make Mr. Masamune the happiest? Something to really thank him. Not just saying the right thing. I wanted to do something concrete. I thought about it for a while, but... As time passed, uh, I didn't come up with any good ideas. Oh no, I overslept. I have to hurry and get to breakfast. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Itsuki. Oh, I know I told you this before, but watch yourself around Itsuki. He's not a bad person, but he sometimes goes too far with his pranks. He will also try to tell you things that you're better off not knowing. Don't try to shut him up, just put your fingers in your ears. Hmm, what is it? That's an awfully scary face you're making. Huh? Wait, why are you covering your ears? <laughs> because of your churlish habit of saying things no decent lady wants to hear, it is good to see that you can defend yourself, Koharu. Mikoto reached out and patted me on the head kindly. Sid, you really need to compliment her on that. Oi, where the crap is everyone? Everyone on a diet? Because if you think you can walk into breakfast late and get food, you're wrong. Hmm, I'm not the last one. I looked around the dining hall. Mr. Masamune, Mr. Senri, and Yuiga weren't there. Sadly, it wasn't unusual for Mr. Senri to miss breakfast. But Yuika and Mr. Masamune were usually more punctual when it came to eating. It was strange not seeing them there on time. I'll go check on them. Um, Mr. Masamune, it's Kaharu. Are you in? Hold on a minute. What's wrong? Is something the matter? No, I'm fine, but, um, it's breakfast time and we didn't see you or Yuika down in the dining hall. What? It's already breakfast time? Sorry, I was looking after Kakeru. Seems he's gotten sick. Oh no! Is he going to be alright? I took him to the Hyokus for a checkup, but it looks like he's caught something nasty. He's got a really high fever. Oh no! I'll handle taking care of him. Could you let everyone know to stay clear until I can confirm that he's over it? Huh? Why? The ship is big, but it's still an enclosed area. If he's contagious, we could have a mini-epidemic on our hands. I guess that it would be bad if everyone got sick all at the same time. I'll be okay. I won't catch it. I haven't had a cold in a really, really long time. That's probably because you didn't come into contact with other people for so long. Huh? Illnesses are usually caused by things like bacteria and viruses. Without human contact, you'd have less of a chance to encounter them. On the flip side, your immune system may be weaker than most. Bacteria? Virus? Immune system? Hearing so many terms I didn't know all at once suddenly made me feel uneasy. I'm not really sure what it all means, but Mr. Masamune said it, so it has to be right. Uh, well, obviously... What? Don't listen and stay. Alright, well, that's what the guide says, so... Don't listen and stay. I'm sorry, I can't. 
What? If Yuriko really... If Yuriko is in a really bad shape, I don't think it's a good idea that you take care of him all by yourself, Mr. Masamune. Koharu. I appreciate the concern. Really, I do. But Kakaru isn't the only one I'm worried about. I'm worried for you, too. If you catch whatever it is he has, then I won't be able to take care of you as much as I want to, because I'm a guy. I'll be fine. I'm healthy, in good shape, and I'm taking care not to catch it. Really? Really. After all, if I got sick, I wouldn't be able to hang out with you. Aww. Jeez, now look what I'm saying. He's blushing. Mr. Masamune! That's right, we wouldn't be able to hang out together if he was sick. I wouldn't like that. I guess I should do what he asked and let him take care of Yuiga. Um, so what are you two going to do about your breakfast? Huh? Oh yeah. For now, can I ask you to go get Akito to make something that's light and easy to digest? Kakeru's complaining that he's not hungry. Okay, what about you, Mr. Masamune? Me? I'll go get something on my own once he's doing all right. You go on and eat without me. Okay. I'd completely forgotten about breakfast. Thanks for the reminder, Koharu. You're welcome. By the time I got back to the dining hall, everyone had left. I guess they're all done eating now. I'll have to tell them all about Yuiga's condition later. But first, I should make some porridge. I read about how to make it in a cookbook. All you need to do is put some rice in a pot and steam it with extra water. I think. What do you think you're doing? Uh, um, I, I just, uh, Yurika got sick and Mr. Masamune said he needs to eat, so, um, uh... Kakeru sick? Really? A <laughs> dumbass. In a blink, there was a pot in his hands. He filled it with rice and then added water, moving quickly and efficiently. This is a much better idea. Mr. Akito's cooking will taste better than mine. Um, Mr. Akito, when it's done, I'd like to take it to Yuiga if you don't mind. Sure, whatever. Ah, <sighs> I wonder how Yuiga's doing. I hope Mr. Masamune doesn't catch his illness. I guess this means I can't spend time with him until Yuiga's all better. There, it's done. Thank you! I'll go take it to Yuigo right away! Hold it. You haven't eaten anything yet either, right? Oh, now that you mention it, I haven't. That walking bottomless pit of Tomaru scarfed up all the side dishes. This is all that was left. Sorry. Mr. Akito held out a plate for me. Two perfectly formed rice balls rested atop it. Oh my! Did you make these for me? Somehow there was actually some rice left over for once. This ain't happening again, you understand? Thank you so much, Mr. Akito. I totally didn't expect anything like this at all. How super nice of you. Ooh, d don't bother thanking me. I'm just getting rid of leftovers, that's all. I don't mind that they're leftovers. These rice balls look super delicious. Oh, um, I'm very happy that you made these for me, but do you mind if I shared them with Mr. Masamune too? Toya. Alright, he skipped out on breakfast too. Yeah, he's looking after Yuiga. Oh, crap. Sorry, there ain't any rice left. Oh, that's okay. I wasn't all that hungry anyway. Thank you very much for your help, Mr. Akito. I'm going to go take the food to Yuiga and Mr. Masamune before it cools off. Ah, uh, there you are, Koharu. Thanks for bringing Kakeru's breakfast. All I did was carry it. Mr. Akito made it. And look, he made some really yummy looking rice balls too. Yeah, they do look good. I'll have to thank Akito later. Sorry for making you do all that by yourself. Everything went okay? Y yeah, it was okay. I was totally alright all by myself. Oh yeah, uh, you would be, wouldn't you? <laughs> I guess I'll head back now. Thanks for bringing this. Mr. Masamune, is there anything else I can do to help? I can bring you things or get stuff you might need ready. Like medicine or something to drink or... No, that's okay. The Hyokos and I can handle the rest. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Aha! Uh -huh. Hey, Kuharu. What's up with Kakeru and Masamune? Were they in their rooms? Yuika's sick, actually. He has a really high fever. Mr. Masamune is looking after him. What? No way! Man, it's hard to imagine Kakeru getting sick. Oh, I know! Could I ask you to let everyone else on the ship know? Mr. Masamune said it's probably best if everyone stayed clear of Yuiga's room so that they don't get sick too. Roger. Mr. Heishi concentrated and covered his ears. Then I started hearing his voice speaking inside my head. Everyone else should have heard it too, so they all got Mr. Masamune's warning now. Thank you, Mr. Heishi. No prob. That was easy peasy. So, are you looking all glum because Kakeru's gotten sick? N no, no. I'm fine. I'm just, um... Mr. Heishi looked at me straight in the eye with a very intense look on his face. His power was telepathy. He could send his thoughts to others, but he couldn't read what they were thinking. However, his powers made him really sensitive to other people's emotions. I didn't even use my powers to notice it. <laughs> I just kind of saw it on your face. Oh dear, was I really that obvious? I'm sorry. Yup, you were. You're way cuter when you're so happy, you're bouncy though. Um... What are you two up to out here? I would appreciate it if you would not imitate Itsuki in public. One of him is more than enough. What? Itsuki? Wait a minute, did I really sound like I was on his level of creepy? Itsuki is not creepy. Yes, telling a lady that you think she is cute where anyone and everyone can hear? That is a quintessential Itsuki move right there. W whoa I didn't mean it in the Itsuki way. Koharu is cute like a kid sister. Like a sister, hmm? If I recall correctly, you said something similar about Nanami. Yeah, she's cute, and her hairstyle looks kind of like mine. Don't you think that makes us look like real siblings? Even the color is close. The color is not close. Oh, you're right, it does! <sighs> Is that all it takes for you to consider someone your sibling? Anyway, you were supposed to be partners with Akito. Why are you not with him? You said I was bugging him and kicked me out. The whole reason we split off into pairs was to prevent people from being left alone. Goharu, we heard Heishi's telepathic message. Is Kakeru alright? He has a really high fever, but Mr. Masamune and the Hyokos are there, and he said he'll be okay. I agree with the advice that everyone should stay clear, so as not to let the illness spread. However, if Masamune is spending so much time keeping an eye on Kakeru, I'm worried that he might get sick himself. He does tend to be the unlucky sort after all. He is... how do I say this? He is the sort who will step in to help and end up in worse shape than the people he decided to aid. I would not be surprised if he catches whatever Kakeru has, but an even worse version of it. Mikoto. Mr. Masamune! Hmm, <laughs> sad, lonely, um, wait, no, maybe more frustrated? What are you talking about? Is there anything at all I can do to help him? If I can't take care of Yuika for him, is there something else I can do? I don't like being unhelpful. Um, if Mr. Masamune is the only one who can look after Yuiga, I'd like to do something to help him out. Does anybody have any ideas of what I could do? Yeah, you should cook something for him. There's nothing a guy loves more than getting a homemade meal from a cute girl. Right, Sakuya? I concur. Oh, and you can step it up by making a dessert instead. Anytime you bite into a homemade sweet treat, you can just feel the love. Personally, I feel love in anything the lady I loved made by hand for me. Uh, man, Sakuya, what you just said is so sappy sweet it caused cavities. Both of you can stop this ridiculous comedy routine right now. Hey, this wasn't a comedy act. We were totally being serious. The best thing to cheer an exhausted Masamune up is love and sugar. In other words, what we need to do is bake him some cookies. Cookies? Koharu, have you ever baked before? Um, 
no, not really. But I've read about it in one of my books. I see. Well then, the prudent course of action would be to ask Akito for help. I figured you'd say that. I've already called him via telepathy. Really? Well, that was thoughtful of you. <laughs> Although I didn't feel like he was gonna come, let me ask again. Oi, I told you to quit bugging me and leave me alone, you twerp. There you are. It's about time you showed up. About time, my ass. Would you quit yammering in my head already? It's driving me up the damn wall. Well, it's your fault for not coming when I called the first time. Shut up. I ain't a dog that has to come trotting up to you every time you yell. And this is your fault. I'm dead tired from cleaning up that toxic monstrosity you and that damn woman called food. I'm going to sleep, so leave me alone. Oh dear. There he goes. Hey, is she? How often do you call for him? Hmm. Oh, pretty much constantly. I also talk to him at night a lot, too. Oh, good lord. I think I'm starting to sympathize with him. Uh-oh. I guess I can't ask Mr. Akito for help. I think I remember seeing a cookbook in the library. Maybe I can do it myself. I don't feel very confident, though. Oh, well, I guess I'll just have to teach you how to do it myself. Really? Yeah, Nanami and I have made stuff together before. I'm a pretty good cook if I do say so myself. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I better try baking by myself. I already got Mr. Akito to do all the work, making the porridge and the rice balls. This time, I want to do it by myself. Thank you, but I think I'll try doing it on my own. Oh, why? That is a very wise decision. Quite wise. It seems like common sense if you ask me. I'll go to the library and see if there's a cookbook I can borrow. Maybe I can offer you some assistance. Really? Oh my, are you planning to make something for me, perhaps? N no of course not. I'm just concerned and want to help her out. Thank you so much, Mikoto. Oh man, why does everybody seem to not like my amazing cooking? There, there. It's probably best for us to make ourselves scarce in the kitchen while the ladies try and make something special. Not for me, eh? <sighs> she may not have meant that. Mikoto and I went to the library and found a nice cookbook, then returned to the kitchen. We decided to make a western sweet called cookies. I'd never had any before, but Mikoto said that they were really yummy. We'll need butter, sugar, flour... There, that should be all the required utensils. Thank you! How many cookies do you think we should make? These are only for Masamune, right? I doubt you will need to make that many. Huh? Aren't you going to make some for Mr. Sakuya? W why would you mention him all of a sudden? Oh, I was just making these cookies for Mr. Masamune because he's my partner, and I wanted to do something nice for him. So I thought that maybe since you were helping me, you might also want to do something like that for Mr. Sakuya. A friendly gesture from my partner. Yeah, just as a partner. I guess I will give him some, if there are any left over. Well, we have plenty of ingredients to make two batches. Only if there are leftovers. That is enough talking. We should hurry up and get started. Okay. We both washed our hands and set to making cookies. It was the first time I'd ever baked anything for someone else. It was a lot of fun. Jurat, I cannot make this dough look proper. The ones I made for myself at home look so cute. The cookbook says to make little balls, and then squish them a little. Oh, it also says if we take too long, they'll get sticky. Like this. Yeah, that looks really pretty. It's perfect. I have to say a big thank you to Mikoto and Mr. Heishi for giving me this idea. And to Mr. Masamune, too. It's because of him that I have a reason to try baking for the first time. We cracked the oven door open and peeked inside, 
The smell of baking cookies filled the room. Well, they smell all right. Yeah. Oven mitts firmly on, we reached in and pulled out the cookie sheet. Oh! The cookies were a beautiful golden brown and looked absolutely delicious. They weren't all shaped perfectly, but the way they puffed up looked almost exactly the same as the picture in the book. They look all right, too. Yes, they do. However, there is still the matter of how they taste. I'm sure they taste just fine. After all, you measured out all the ingredients precisely as the cookbook said. True, still, I think we should both taste test one before we give them to other people. On three, okay? Okay! I picked up a piping hot cookie and held it up to my mouth. Shouldn't they let it cool down first? One, two... I clutched the cookies to my chest as I dashed off to deliver them to Mr. Masamune. The sight of Mr. Sakuya's beaming smile when Mikoto gave him his share popped into my mind. He looked so happy to get those cookies from Mikoto. Mikoto fidgeted and looked awfully embarrassed when he said he liked them, but I think she was fighting to hide her shy smile. I wonder if Mr. Masamune would like them too. Yeah? Okay, we're gonna end this video here. I can never find a good place to break in these stories anymore. <laughs> but I hope to see you in my future videos, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Derilly signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.